Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you're all really well. So today we are doing a reading for Divine Soulmates Twin Flames where there is a karmic situation or partner involved. Um, I do get some weird comments um, once in a while, which is totally okay. Um, I feel like some people just don't really understand what we mean when we say karmic. So just to clear it up real quick, um, we just use that term to differentiate um, a relationship that is just purely for a karmic lesson or to balance out karma from a divine connection where there is a different type of a soul contract, all right? And yes, there is karma between divine soulmates as well, but it's a lot more than that. So that's why we just use the word karmic, that term. It's just to make it easier to differentiate between the two. And there's a lot of information on that online. So if anybody is confused, you can actually look for information on that. So hopefully that helps. So yeah, um, today's reading, we're going to be looking at the masculine's energy towards that karmic situation or person. Doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, although that is how I will be doing the reading for the most part at least. Um, we'll also be looking at the masculine's energy towards their feminine. We'll take a quick look at the feminine's energy and also what is coming up. And as usual, it is a general reading, so it means it's not going to be everybody's situation. But you can get a personal reading with me. All that information is in the description box. And I also do offer cord cutting sessions. And because this is another common question about the cord cuttings, a lot of people ask if if it is recommended to cut the cord to their twin or to their divine counterpart. And honestly, like I cannot answer that for you. Um, there are people who believe that you cannot cut the cord with a twin soul and there are other people who believe that you can. So I, I feel like it, it's really up to you. Either way, I always ask for permission from spirit before cutting any cords. But typically what I recommend is cutting cords from people from your past. All right, um, oftentimes we don't get permission for, for a divine counterpart or for anybody really that is still very prominent like in your life where you're still learning deep, deep lessons. So I do recommend cutting cords to other people first from your past because that can just help in the healing process and it does actually help indirectly um, your, uh, just your path, your uh, learning, your healing process, even in terms of a divine counterpart, because the triggers can be lessened because a lot of these triggers, they actually are rooted in people from our past, like parents, for example, uh, abusers, anything. So, all right, just wanted to make sure I got those things out of the way. And I think that's all I had to say. So let's get into the reading. We'll be pulling a couple of oracle cards first <clears throat> for the masculines, and then we'll get into the tarot. So let's see what is going on with the masculines currently. What do we need to know? What is going on with the masculines? All right, we have night wind, facing fear, subconscious release, and healing. All right, yeah, so this is a bit of a heavy card, actually. Um, there are positives in it, of course, all right, and of course there would be. Anything that is happening that might be negative, it always has the opportunity to give us something really, really positive, all right? Anyway, so the night wind, this means that the masculines right now, they're going through a pretty dark time. They're going through a difficult time where things might feel very either very pessimistic or just very dark, very heavy, depression even, but, and also fears, fears coming up, but this is happening so that they can actually face those fears, so that they can bring up the fears from the subconscious in order for them to be released and for healing to happen. So basically though, yeah, they're not having a really nice time at the moment. Let me just get a couple more from this deck here. And we will get more information on that. I can just feel it. We're gonna get a little more specific as to what that is about. So let's see, what else?
All right, we have cycles, lessons, and new direction. Ooh, okay. So here's what's going on. It's like the masculines, they go through cycles, right? Just like the feminines go through cycles. Like you can find yourself, you know, feeling better, feeling more detached, and then you might feel like you are attached again, or you're feeling that nostalgia more intensely. Um, the masculines also go through their own cycles, but in a slightly different way. So right now, they're going through that part of the cycle where things are feeling heavy, things are feeling dark because they're facing the reality of their choices. So this is actually a positive, it just doesn't feel positive to them, okay? But in the grand scheme of things, it's positive because they're not living in like this la la land where <laughs> where they're in denial and just convincing themselves that everything is fine and dandy when it's actually not. So they're in that part of the cycle right now where things are feeling extra difficult. They're not liking their life. They're not liking the decisions that they have made. So through that, they're learning this lesson that actually they need to take a new direction rather than repeating this cycle over and over and over again. Knowing that, right, that's the lesson here that, that the universe is actually trying to teach them. They need to do something differently. They need to take a new direction to move away from what it is that is creating this darkness. And really, you know, that's, it's, it's that they're staying there because of fear. So they're staying in that situation because they have a fear of leaving it behind for whatever reason. So, okay, let's get into the tarot. So let's see what their energy is like in terms of their karmic situation or just their life outside of their Divine Feminine. Nine of Swords in reverse, the Lovers, and the Six of Swords also in reverse. Okay, so the, something is stressing them out here. And I feel like actually the, um, the Nine of Swords, it's in reverse because this is a past stress, a, something that was creating anxiety for them in the past. It's coming back. It's, it's already come back. And what is that anxiety about? It's about having to make a choice between their divine feminine and something else. Now, what's creating a lot of stress about this is the fact that they have not been able to move away from this situation. And it's not just the fact that they haven't been able to move away from this situation that they're in, it's also that they have not been able to move away from the connection with their divine feminine. They have not moved away just overall from anything. And that's why we had that cycles card because it's like staying stuck in that same pattern. And so this is why this stress is coming back. It's that night wind to teach them that something different needs to happen. They need to take a new direction, otherwise they're just gonna find themselves trapped in that, in this situation, like, <laughs> never endlessly, right? So, it's like, right now though, for this lover's card to be showing up like this, like right smack in the middle there, this is all about that choice in terms of love. So that is something that is very prominently on their mind at the moment. All right, let's see. Let's see their energy specifically towards the karmic situation currently. The King of Wands in reverse, the Five of Pentacles, and the Nine of Pentacles. All right, interesting. There, there's some kind of a loss here. That, that they're feeling. Um, they're feeling actually pretty, I want to say detached, almost like independent from this connection, but there's also this lack of confidence in terms of being able to overcome either financial difficulties or abandonment issues. So it's like 
not, it's like, it's almost like they're not sure if they can actually figure this out in a way where nobody is left being abandoned or that there isn't going to be some huge kind of some huge kind of a loss and it actually feels like even this is like a mini cycle here within that cycle where it's like on the one hand feeling like yeah you know there is going to be a loss and then on the other hand feeling like yeah but we can do this I can still figure this out like I, I feel independent from this anyway so it's kind of like a mixture of both. So I'll probably, I probably will clarify that just to get more clarity on it. But let me just take a look at what is going on in their headspace. I do get though um, specifically here that there is a lot of financial concern at the moment. The Knight of Pentacles, the Six of Pentacles in reverse, and the Three of Cups. Definitely financial concerns or um, maybe just practical concerns are coming up right now. And I feel like that's what the fears are revolving around, at least for this particular group here that, that I'm tapping into. Um, there is something here that they're thinking. It, it feels like either like there's some kind of a plan, some kind of a strategy. They are definitely moving in that direction, but <clears throat> there's the sense of feeling like they, that like there's something here that they still need to either balance out or there's something that they need to give. Now, for some of them, I also feel like this is a huge part of the lesson that they need to learn that you can't you can't try to find happiness by feeling like you constantly need to have everything be perfect for others so it's almost like they feel like they need to like fix things fix certain things first before going after their own happiness when it's like yeah that's not you need to go out go by going after your own happiness, things will automatically fall into place. Like the solutions will be given. Like even with this three of cups, like I feel like, you know, this is all about keeping everybody happy and making sure that everybody is provided for. And yes, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a good quality to have. And I know <laughs> I can just like imagine some of the comments because I've gotten similar comments in the past where they're like, yeah, but what about the DF? You know, they're not balancing the DF or, you know, things like that. And yes, I understand that, but this is just the way that they are perceiving it, um, just overall. And it's, it's really hard sometimes to fully see something from someone else's perspective. And I'm not saying that their perspective is correct. This is just what I am getting. All right. I'm not justifying them. I'm just seeing, saying what I am seeing here. Let's see emotionally what's going on. Hierophant, the Ace of Cups, and the Emperor. Ooh, wow. All right. So it's like there's a little bit of some, again, it's like learning, all right? I'm feeling like even on an emotional level, they're learning about their emotions and they're learning about, 100% learning about self-love and just love overall. And they're learning more about the spiritual aspect of that. So it feels kind of like there's this contrast between the Hierophant and the Emperor. Where it's like on the one hand feeling like they want to have this control of everything and for everything to feel um, like it's under control. Like everything is just going smoothly, like they are in charge. Um... But then on the other side of that, it's, yeah, but is this giving me spiritual and emotional fulfillment? Let me clarify these. 
I actually feel like there's a contrast here between the karmic situation and the divine feminine where so I know I haven't gotten the cards yet for their energy towards the feminine but what I'm kind of getting is that it's like they're feeling like whatever their karmic situation is they feel like they have they can maintain some kind of a control over that maybe because it's familiar I don't know but they're feeling like they can maintain some kind of a control over that whereas with their feminine they're feeling like they have no control whatsoever and somehow this is incorporated into, into the lesson that they're learning currently in the cycle that they are in. All right, so let me clarify that Five of Pentacles and the Nine of Pentacles. I'm actually going to get jumping cards for this. Five of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles. All right, we have the Ace of Wands and the Three of Swords. Yeah, so I feel like, you know, they kind of feel like they are ready and that they could actually um, move away from this and still be okay, even if there are certain fears about walking away. But the whole issue is what I said down here, that they feel like even though they would be okay and that they are somehow, like, that they can make it on their own, they're feeling they're worried about the other people here. They're worried about who they're going to leave out in the cold. They're worried about who might feel abandoned. And I know they abandoned the Divine Feminine. I know. <laughs> I'm just telling you what, what their perception is. And, you know, maybe it resonates with you and maybe it doesn't. And, you know, maybe sometimes we like what we see and sometimes we don't. So, but that's, that's what it is. And it might not even be the karmic, um, the karmic partner, him or herself, that they feel like they're abandoning, you know? I mean, maybe for some of them it's children, but it doesn't even have to be that. It could even be that they feel like they're abandoning their family, um, meaning, you know, like what their family wanted for them or something related to their culture or to their beliefs and that they are abandoning their own beliefs, right? Which is why we also might have the hierophant down here, okay? So don't, don't just, you know, limit it to being that person that might be serving as the, you know, karmic obstacle in this case. All right, let's see the next row. With that six of pentacles being in reverse. The Empress, the Wheel of Fortune in reverse, and the Queen of Swords in reverse. They're definitely feeling like something is completely out of balance here. And they know that. They know that something is completely out of balance, but they feel like they need to give to it. Um, but what I'm getting here is that they're feeling like they, they cannot. They cannot. The Divine Feminine is very heavily on their mind, and because of that, they're having a hard time. Um, even though they feel a control, like I said, in this situation, it's like they're gradually also losing that the control in the karmic situation. And that's because of the Divine Feminine being so prominent right now in their minds. And so they can't just keep, you know, going along with some kind of a facade. And like I said, you know, th these are cycles. So from what I'm getting here, they must have been in, this group at least, must have been in a part of that cycle where it was kind of like just going with the flow, just kind of putting up a facade. But I feel like it, that this time around, it was a little different than previous times because it wasn't, they weren't so convinced of it. It's like in the back of their minds, they knew it was a facade. Whereas previous times it was more, <clears throat> it was more unconscious. This time, no, it's not. Or it wasn't. Pretty strange energy this time around. All right, let's see. Um, do I want to clarify this bottom now? Yeah, we'll just get like one clarifier here. This higher and the emperor. 
the seven of swords in reverse yeah see they can't they can't sneak away from their own self um, so definitely there's been some dishonesty here to their own self about how they feel trying to convince themselves that they feel differently but it, it just can't it can't it, it that cannot go on like they, like they already know what the truth is here especially in terms of how they feel about love and not only that i'm getting again that they actually feel the difference between the spiritual love and between just you know playing a certain role so okay that's all these fears subconscious fears coming up to be to be released again i feel like there's a huge lesson here in terms of other people and how much are you going to worry about other people instead of going after your own your own happiness and then you know those things everything else that you feel is unbalanced or that you haven't resolved or whatever those will fall into place but only once you are aligned or once you begin to align or taking steps towards that towards that alignment so that's the lesson that they're learning currently and all of that is taking a new direction right? moving towards love so, let's see their energy towards their feminine. Spirit's making it complicated for me this time, isn't it? Ten of Pentacles in reverse, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Knight of Swords. All right. Really focused currently on the fact that, that they have not been stable or consistent towards you. And right now, really thinking a lot about the fact that there is no huh. I'm getting for some of you that it's almost like this um this new realization that the two of you are, are not together and that you know kind of feeling like you're not going to be together I'm not saying that in the negative way I'm saying it in the way where that's actually driving them pushing them to want to take some kind of an action here is this knight of swords so I don't know if why are they so focused on this? Almost like focused like, okay, what am I going to do? I need to do something about this. Hold on, let me get, let me get the rest of them. Just had the star and temperance flip over, which are both very healing, healing cards. Um, which is good. But let's see. What is going on in their headspace? All right, yeah, death, <laughs> the five of cups in reverse, woo, and the hierophant in reverse, woo, okay. All right, so yeah, they're definitely feeling like this could be over, and that thought of the connection being over, like what if it's over for good, is really triggering them at the moment, big time. Big time. They're feeling a lot of grief over that thought. There's a lot of guilt. There's a lot of remorse, regret over the fact that this might be that this might be done. So I don't know if, because I'm kind of getting the sense here that that the feminines might be doing something, or the masculines might think that the feminine is doing something, which is actually giving them that impression. Either that or they're feeling like, like you're doing something that is triggering them and it's just bringing all of this to the surface. Maybe you're doing something that they don't, that they don't like or that they would feel protective over or maybe they think that you are either in some kind of a danger, maybe there's some jealousy, they're seeing something that's making them jealous. Um, something, there's something going on here that is triggering them in this way. Or maybe you just completely walked away. Maybe you changed something. Maybe you've blocked them, especially if it's like the first time, if you've never blocked them before and like now you block them, for example. Or it could be anything. It could even be something that they're just picking up on, on their own, by their own self. Um, it could even be for some of them a dream that they had. It could be anything. It's going to be different for everybody, but there's definitely something here giving them this impression. And that's triggering them. 
and it's part of their lesson. It's to help them to get closer to learning this lesson. All right, let's see what else. The Eight of Wands in reverse, the Seven of Swords, and the Knight of Wands in reverse. So, okay, this is for their emotional space. Yeah, it's not a good one right now. It's definitely not a good one right now. I'm even getting that they're in some way, this is like really weird the way it's coming in, in some way they're feeling betrayed by, by you, by the feminine, even if that's not realistic, it doesn't matter. And I actually get that they know that it's not realistic to feel that way, but because they're the ones who, who have betrayed in, so to speak, the feminine, but something is happening here. I feel like the feminine is doing something different. And so that's giving them the feeling of betrayal, even if it's not really betrayal and they know it's not betrayal, but it, it's like the feeling though is similar because maybe they were used to you just always being there and maybe now you're not. So they're feeling that like the way you would feel if you were betrayed, even though they know it's not really betrayal. <laughs> so I hope that that makes sense. Again, I'm getting that for some of them, it's like they have found out something about you with that Eight of Wands being in reverse and it's shaking them up. It's shaking them up. For some of them, because it, it, it's really going to depend, but for some of them, it may even make them angry. Um, it just might make them feel very, very like irritable, like what's going on. Um, and there's this fear coming up of losing you. So there's the fear of walking away from the karmic situation, but then there's also the fear of losing you. So, um, I really feel like these are really, really clear, so I don't need to clarify these, but let's get a couple cards for the feminines and then we'll see what is coming up. And hopefully this will all, <laughs> I'm hoping this is going to clear up for them um, in the next week, because it feels pretty, pretty heavy. So let's see, for the feminines. Okay, and we have the hidden path, the marriage of spirit and matter. Yeah, okay, so there's definitely something that is going on. I feel like you're doing something and you don't even know how it is affecting your masculine. Maybe some of you do, maybe you do. And if you do, please let me know in the comments. Um, but I feel like for a lot of you, you don't even know that what, what you're doing or what's happening in your life, or you know, even if they're just finding out something that might not even be true, like it could just be a rumor. <laughs> but it's it's still divinely orchestrated. So whatever this is, it's like it's being hidden. And there's something that's happening here in the physical world, in the 3D, in your life that is affecting just everything, even in the 5D. So that's why there's this marriage of spirit and matter in this particular case. Um, because it's it's like you are influencing that lesson in a positive way. So let me just pull from the same deck that I did for the masculines. See what else wants to come through for the feminines. Because I feel like that was actually like more for the masculines. Like I want to see if we're going to get anything a little more specific for you. Alright, we have free will, patience, reinvention, and bound. Alright, so I love that we got this free will card and the reinvention actually because I feel like it goes back to what I've been saying in the past few readings that it's like the, the feminine is really breaking away from this connection in the sense of making your own decisions independently of what's going on with your masculine. And I know I've said this like so many times, but I feel like Sometimes it's easy, it's easy to just be like, yeah, yeah, I know I do that, but no, like, do you really? <laughs> and I get here that, you know, you're um, really understanding this at a deeper level, like to what that actually means, because a lot of times the influence that we have from the masculine is very, very subconscious. Like we can make certain decisions and we think that they are, you know, just our own decisions, but we are influenced by them. Like, for example, um, 
Can I even think of an example? <laughs> All right, okay, so a very like easy example, even though this one is probably not so subconscious, is like, you know, moving to a different state. Like if you live in the same state and you've been thinking about moving. So you may not have moved to a different state because well then it would just make a possible union with your masculine a lot more difficult, okay? so. And then you might actually try to justify your decision to stay in the same state in a hundred different ways. Not anymore. Now it's like, no, you're going to make your own decisions regardless of the masculine, as if the masculine doesn't even exist. So that's, that's like really, really, really positive for the, for the feminines, all right? And I'm getting that, again, like it, it's, this is actually related to you having learned patience. Patience for what is meant for you and, for, and that you will have something that will make you happy regardless, all right? And that's the reinvention. And I feel like, you know, it's, it's the detachment, like coming out of that attachment here with the bound card and reinventing yourself in terms of that. But of course, you know, like if you're feeling this way, you know, take this as guidance or take it as encouragement to at least become aware of when are you making a choice or a decision that is influenced by the situation with your masculine. Just become aware of it. You don't need to do anything else. Just be aware of it. That in and of itself is enough. It's enough to help you through and to help you to transform that without you really needing to try, okay? Because you can't force it, but becoming aware of it, like it will start to happen automatically on its own. Okay, so let's see what is coming up. Is this going to clear up or what for the masculines towards their karmic? I love this. Oh, wow. Okay. And you know what's interesting? Um, okay. So we have the seven of cups in reverse, which is like the exact answer to the question that I asked. Like, is it going to clear up? And I get the seven of cups in reverse, which to me, yes, it means the confusion is clearing up. There's the confusion, the choices, like everything that they're thinking here, like this versus that and the abandonment and fear of this and fear of that. And what am I going to do? And it's all of these things that are just blurring them, that cloudiness is clearing up, all right, coming up in the next week. And here we have the Ten of Pentacles in reverse also, and the Eight of Swords in reverse. So what's funny, what I was going to say, is that this Eight of Swords actually popped out of the deck like two times when I was pre-shuffling the deck before even starting this video. And I was like, that's interesting. I wonder if this Eight of Swords in reverse is going to come out in the reading, and it did. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you may remember that like there was one time, I think it was like almost two months ago, where like we kept getting the Eight of Swords in reverse, like, I don't know, I think we got it like in four or five readings consecutively. So it's back. So that's telling me that, okay, once again, they're moving out of that negative part of the cycle and moving towards feeling like, you know what? I don't need to be afraid of ending this, this karmic situation, whatever it is. All right, especially if it's a marriage or a relationship or something, you know, um, long-term, consistent, say, well, whatever, whatever it is. It's releasing that fear. Releasing the fear and clearing up the confusion. So that is good to know. And I think that that actually, this message here, I think it actually aligns with something that's happening um, astrologically. I think it has to do with Mars possibly going direct. I could be wrong. Maybe it's Neptune. I don't know. I don't know. If anybody knows, you can feel free to leave it in the comments. Um, but something is definitely happening that I think is relating to cloudiness clearing up. Okay, so do expect the same for you as well. All right, for the feminines, because this is um, these energies, they affect everyone. All right, so for their energy towards the feminine. I did see the um, the Nine of Swords actually is the second one that fell out, but I, I didn't feel like I was supposed to take it. But I will keep it in the back of my mind. So it could be that they are beginning to get more stressed concerning their feminine here. 
All right, so the chariot in reverse, the page of swords, and the three of pentacles, and also keeping that nine of swords in reverse in mind. Um, yeah, they're feeling like they are losing control here. There's something that they're finding out. It's, it's, it, this message is persisting. It's persisting here. There's something here that they're finding out about their feminine, and I feel like for a lot of them, they're continuing to find out about this, and it's making them feel like, you know, they're losing control and that there's nothing that they can do about it, and it almost feels like this is something that the feminine has felt at some point in the past, and now it's like the tables have turned and it's the masculine feeling this way towards the feminine and almost like wanting to help you, wanting to help you or wishing that they could be a part of whatever you're doing or something along those lines. So that's the energy that they're moving towards. Now, of course, the Page of Swords could even mean communication. So for um, some of you, I do totally get that if there has been some separation or no contact, that this, whatever this is that's <laughs> triggering them in this way could actually get them to reach out to you. And I actually feel like for some of you, this may have already happened, all right? Because readings are always a little bit, they, they can't be 100% exact for everybody time-wise. So for some of you, this may have already happened. For others of you, this might be um, coming up. So, okay, let's get a final oracle message to close this out. And we have soulmates. <laughs> I don't even really have much to say about that. You can take it however you feel like it is meant for you, okay, soulmates. I feel like it's, you know, just kind of like a reminder that we do have soul contracts. There is you know, and what you might be feeling, it's not just all in your head. Even the karmic is a soulmate because it's serving a purpose for a lesson. So take it as it resonates. That is it. I thank you guys so much for watching and much love.